The second really important part of modern web pages is something called CSS. CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets. And whereas the HTML is really intended to provide structure, the HTML answers questions like uh, what text belongs together, what text is important, what text should go first, what text should go second, things like that. The Cascading Style Sheets are designed to answer the question, how should things look? And there's really no aspect of how web pages are rendered that you can't somehow adjust using cascading style sheets. Um, so let's look at an example of this. So I'm going back to my, my previous example. I have a very simple uh, page of HTML that I'm editing in JS Fiddle. And what's happening right now, so you might look over here, you might say, okay, well, well again, I mean, I can see that this is the first page section is larger than this other heading, and the reason is because it's an H1 versus an H2. But how much larger should it be? Maybe I want my H1 tags to be huge. Maybe I want them to be in a different font. Maybe I want uh, to control various aspects of spacing between things. So let's look at how we can do that using, using cascading style sheets. So up here at the top is my CSS panel in JS Fiddle. And so I'm going to start adding some rules here that will allow me to determine uh, various aspects of, of how the page looks. So let me start off with the simple one. So I'm going to add a rule that controls how the H1s on the page, the top level headings look. Um, let's do font size 24px. Okay, I'm going to go over here. I'm going to run this guy. And oh, so this is interesting, right? So now you'll notice that if I go back and look at the page, the first page heading section is actually like kind of the, almost the same size. And the reason is I made it, I actually made it smaller than the H2. So that, that's not good. I want my H1s to be bigger than my H2. So let's make the H2s, let's say we want them to be 16 pixels. Okay. Um, again, go back up here, rerun this. Okay, now I'm making progress. But now the H2 is actually smaller than the text. So, um, let me go up here and I'm going to add a rule uh, to the body and the font size 10px, hit run. Okay, ooh, that's, that's actually way too small. <laughs> Let's do the following. Let's make the body font size 20. Let's make the H1 font size 48 and the H2 font size 36. And that actually will make everything a little easier to read. Okay, great. So now what I've done is I'm giving instructions to the web browser about how things should look. And this is what CSS is for. So uh, CSS consists of a series of rules that the browser uses when rendering the web page. And those rules are cascading in that I can define them on a part of the document and they can apply to lots of different parts of the document. So for example, this rule up here where I change the font size to 20 pixels, uh, this rule applies to all of the text on the page. So all this text down here is now bigger. Uh, let me show you uh, how that works. So let's say I wanted to increase it to 30, hit run, um, and now you can see that the text is even bigger than it was before. That's one of the real powers of CSS is that I can change lots of parts of the page with just a few small rules and it also makes it possible to create pages that look uniform. I can make sure that all the page, all the text on the page of a particular kind it has a particular style to it. And I can do that with only a few simple rules. I did the same thing to my H1s. So I made the H1s 48 pixels. I made the H2s uh, 36 pixels. And, and, I can, and I can do this all day long. There's lots of other elements of the page that I can control as well. So let's, let's do another one. Um, let's say that I want my paragraphs to be a little bit farther apart than they are right now. Um, so let's do this. Let's say margin, um, top, 20 pixels and margin bottom 20 pixels. Okay, Oop. go back up here, zoom out, hit run. Now that doesn't look like it changed much, so that must be close to what they were before. But let's try something like 40 pixels. Um, run it again. Okay, now, yeah, so now you can see this changing. Let me make it even, even more ridiculous, like 60 pixels. Uh, run. Ah, there we go. Okay, great. So now what you can see happening is that these uh, paragraphs down here, uh, remember that I have uh, 
here is the first paragraph. This will continue the first paragraph in my first paragraph. That's right here. So this is the first paragraph, and then this is the second paragraph. And what I did, again, using CSS, was I controlled how much vertical space there was. So I set margins at the top and bottom of each one of these paragraph objects, and I made those margins bigger than they were before. And as I do that, uh, they go farther apart. Uh, so let me set them to 10, and then you'll see that these are going to get quite a bit closer together. Yeah, so now there's almost it's almost hard to see that there's a break between this paragraph. That's a little too small. Let's set it to something like 20. All right, that, that's, pretty, that's pretty good. So this is an example of how to use CSS. So CSS is structured differently than HTML. It consists of, so this is um, CSS rules, uh, consists of a statement that determines what part of the document they match. This matches the body tag. And then all the fonts within the body tag that are not set by some other CSS rule are now set to 30 pixels. Um, JS Fiddle is a fantastic tool to learn how to play with this sort of stuff, um, and I would encourage you to give it a try. Um, but CSS is designed to determine how websites look, and using CSS rules, you can customize all sorts of different components of the layout of typical sites.